One of my biggest regrets is ever going to work for the State Department because I just didn't think they appreciated the work that we did for them. And so if I had said no, the company would still be uh, going and flourishing and, and carrying on. And, and maybe the maybe State Department is, is more, maybe DynCorp is a better vendor for them. I can understand that. Yeah. So at peak, we probably had 3,500. 3,500. People deployed. People yeah. deployed. 3,000, 3,500. That's between Iraq, Afghanistan, aviation. And this also includes, we had for Hurricane Katrina, we had about 700 guys deployed for about a year. What were you guys doing down there? So we never had any plan ever to be in the domestic security business to do anything like that inside of America. But <laughs> I remember I was actually doing a surveillance exercise for that other team I was doing, right? The last chapter in my book. And I uh, had the radio on. I was talking about, well, and I'd been in South Florida when Hurricane Katrina went over South Florida. So I'd still been there. And then up the, the, the hurricane still rolled and it smacked the uh, you know New Orleans area. Um. And we were just taking delivery of a Puma, a big helicopter, a little bit bigger than a Black Hawk. And I remember calling our air boss, Richard Pear. I said, hey, put the, put the air crew to bed, reset their crew rest, and as soon as they can in the morning, fly to New Orleans. We'll just figure it out. And sure enough, they started flying. And one of our management staff had been in a Harvard course, a Harvard executive course, with some senior guy from the Coast Guard. So he literally reached across the hall, uh, uh, across the aisle of his classroom and said, hey, we got a helicopter. We can help you guys out in New Orleans. Roger. So November 505, our helicopter became Coast Guard 505 by the time they made it to New Orleans. And they evacuated 128 people. And again, it was a great case of, of putting the right people with the right attitude, with an objective, right? It was, it was, uh, was objective-based leadership. Our goal is to go help and make good things happen. And so they did. And um, But then after um, they were working for a few days, all the Coast Guard provided us was fuel. We, you know, we, we sent that gratis. Um, they moved a bunch of people. Our Casas were flying a bunch of stuff down from, um, from Moyoc. And then uh, the private sector started calling, right? Walmart, Bell South, insurance companies, because there had been a total breakdown of, of law and order and chaos. And so we ended up surging 145 guys from 36, uh, from six states away. Um, we did it in about 36 hours. We beat the Louisiana National Guard into the French Quarter. Incredible. Our guys arrived and found bodies in the streets, not from the storm, but from violence, from looting. And so, yes, our guys went armed. And, um, you know, full on body armor because they were even shooting at aircraft. But um, within a couple of days, the, the plates came off and it was just down to, uh, to sidearms. But then FEMA... So you were able to get back to law and order within a few days of just being down there with 145 guys? Well, yeah. So we weren't, we weren't there to... Ch we were there to, to secure specific objectives. Right? Okay. Like Walmart called because I think they'd had like five or eight stores looted picked clean and they had a central distribution facility was going to be next. And so in that case, we dropped like a commando team, <laughs> meaning they had, we dropped them off with food, water, SATCOM and uh, rules of engagement, right? And a copy of our quickly um, uh, licensed Louisiana private security and um, investigations firm, right? So we went there with the right licenses and they, they go and the guys just sat there and prevented any looters, right? Because looting only happens when people knock on the door and nothing happens and you call 911 and nothing happens and and they go. So then FEMA came to us, all right, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which was tasked to stabilize this whole debacle. And they, because they'd contacted the Federal Protective Service, which is this federal police force as part of DHS. And they were supposed to send down hundreds and hundreds of police officers, federal police officers, to secure all these areas. And their employee union said, no, the conditions were too rough and too unsafe. They wouldn't go. 
So FEMA asked if we could do it. And we said, uh, okay, sure, right? Because our default answer was yes, and we're going to figure it out how to make something happen. And so, yes, but then the, you know, the, the number became 700 quickly, but we had to provide all the life support, all the logistics support. And, and I'm so proud, yet again, of the team that just figured this out, because at that point, between Iraq and Afghanistan, every kind of military tent was on back order for years. So what did they do? Well, they went and bought circus tents. And they put them up in various parking lots. Jim Dehart and his crew of maintenance guys took car trailers, okay, and, and put in shower and sanitation facilities inside that with uh, water treatment. And we just figured it out how to support guys in the field. And they ended up buying an RV and put a VSAT antenna a uh, satellite system on the top of it. So that became the mobile pay wagon in office, which could visit all these sites. And it was uh, it was not the perfect solution, but it was a damn a damn bit better than nothing. Wow. How and that all that was stood up how fast? Days. And and we had and, and you know what? We had no plans again. There was no prior staging an organization say let's have a domestic response force ready for no nothing like that basically for the first 145 guys we could pull inventory off the warehouse of what we would do to provide contractors with you know a radio or a firearm or body armor or whatever it is we just kind of cobbled it together incredible how, how long were you guys down there i think we were there for three years Three years, yeah, at least two. But it was it was far longer than than we ever thought necessary. So it got cleaned up in a couple of days, and then they kept it. They kept black well, yeah, because the there was a lot of. I mean, it was almost like refugee camps, morgue, cash distribution offices. There was a lot of things that needed security because it far outstripped local law enforcement's ability to to handle it. So. Did you did Blackwater ever work in that capacity anywhere else in the U.S.? No. Um, no. <laughs> we had one. There was one other good story that came out of that that evacuation because we were actually contacted by Bill Gates' office, <laughs> who had they had lost touch. Right, I think like Melinda Gates' sister lived along the Gulf Coast, and. Phones were down, no satcom, no nothing. And so a former CIA associate of ours had been working at that office. And he called us and said, hey, could you send somebody to just go, A, make contact and bring them supplies to see what's up? Check. So the guys loaded up an ATV with a trailer inside of a casa. And they flew to an airfield, which was actually closed, right, because of all the storm damage. And I think they ended, landed short on a damaged runway, or they land on a taxiway. And off they go, miles and miles away from their destination, because it's as close as they could get. So they go overland, chainsaws, cutting down trees as they go to this specific address, knock on the door, hey, we're from Blackwater, the Gates family sent us, here's a SATCOM, call them. Dropped off generator, food, fuel, medicine, Left, mission complete, off they go, back in the Casa, back to Virginia, back to North Carolina. We ended up with a nice ATV out of that, but uh, the, 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 the Gates job paid for the ATV. <laughs> nice. But it was a good, it was, a, it was a, an example of you give the right people uh, with a clear mission, an objective based, right? Get to them, like, like, that, like that thing you hopefully read in the military somewhere, the, the message to Garcia, right? When, when the U.S. had to get a message to Garcia, who was somewhere in the hills of Cuba, right, to organize some kind of resistance against the Spanish, they just sent a guy to say, your job is to get a message to Garcia. It's not to ask me 10 steps of what to do. Get it there. Make it happen. Blackwater was good at making it happen. Hey, everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.